Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my lecture. So in this video, we'll talk about the chromosome organization. So you need to stay tuned till the end of the video because you are going to learn many interesting things about genome organization, about chromosome organization. So let's start. So how does chromosome basically look like when we think about the chromosome? So when I ask you that uh, what comes to your mind when we think of the chromosome? So these are the kind of the, you know, um, let's see here. These are the kind of the basically X-shaped structures that are flash in our mind. So this is the classical chromosome. Well, it's not incorrect, but this is the more appropriately set as the, we should say it as a uh, metaphysic chromosome. That simply means that uh, these chromosomes looks very different in different stages of the cell cycle. Like here you can see these are the different stages of the cell cycle. These are the interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and then telophase. So in the chromosome, in the interface, of the cell cycle, these uh, chromosomes have appearance like these structures. So these are like beads on a string. In prophase, these things become more complicated and the chromosomes are now become um, more, uh, you can say, densely packed here in, in the prophase. Whereas in this particular metaphase, the chromosomes looks like that the uh, characteristic X-shaped structure. So at different point in the cell cycle, cell cycle chromosomes would look like very different. Uh, so we can say that the overall appearance of the chromosome is highly dynamic. Just like uh, if you think of yourself, you even don't look similar when you are as um, teenagers versus uh, a young person or even a mature person so that's where the chromosomes doesn't look like the same always so as you can see here that in the interface the uh, the appearance of the chromosome is just like the beads on the string structure in prophase they are like the uh, loops or more condensed form and in the uh, metaphase these are the chromosomes are just like the characteristic x shape structure so we can say that this uh, classical chromosome is uh, uh, as a metaphase basic chromosomes. <clears throat> So let's look at the different levels of the chromosome organization. So here you can see that at the very uh, simplest level of the organization, this is uh, probably 10 na nanometer fiber or it is uh, uh, more specifically, it is the uh, 11 nanometer fiber. Okay, so this 11 nanometer fiber, this is at the simplest level we can see. Here, this particular structure is the uh, nucleosome. So these nucleosomes are the combination of the DNA and histone proteins. So these are the strands of the DNA and these ball-like structures are the histone proteins. So uh, let's look in detail this particular structure. So this is the nucleosome. It is basically the uh, unit of the uh, unit of the chromatin. So here, these ball-like structures are the uh, specific proteins the, uh, that are the histone proteins. These histone proteins are wrapped by the DNA. So when we are when we look at the structure of the histones, these histone proteins are um, basic proteins because of the presence of the basic amino acids. So these basic amino acids that are present in the histone proteins, these are the uh, lysine and arginine. So these, these basic amino acids are present in the histones. So that's why these histones proteins are basic in nature. So they are found in the nucleus. When we look at their uh, structure, so these histones are basically the canonical histones. And these include uh, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. These canonical histones, uh, when they combine with each other, they basically form dimers. So first of all, they will form dimer. And then these dimers will associate and um, ultimately they will form octamer. So when these, um, uh, these canonical uh, histones are joined or combined, they will form a dimer. And when these dimers associate, then the tetramer will be generated. 
So each of these histones are, you can say these are repeated twice uh, in a histone octamer. So overall, the octamer look like a uh, ball. Okay, so this is uh, the ball of the histone proteins on which the DNA is wrapping around. So this particular DNA, which is wrapping around the histone proteins, this is the nucleosomal DNA. And there are interactions between the histones and the DNA because you know that these histones are the uh, uh, are the uh, uh, basic in nature and have a positive charge and the DNA has the negative charge because of the presence of the phosphate groups. So around two, 200 base pairs of the DNA or probably you can say more specifically is the 165 base pairs of the DNA is basically wrapped around the uh, histone proteins. So these histone proteins with the uh, DNA is known as the nucleosome. It's complex ko hum kehte hain, this is the nucleosome and this it is actually the nucleosome that is the basic unit of the chromosome at the simplest organization. So uh, at the simplest organization, basically the chromosomes are look like this beads on a string model. So what are these beads? These beads are basically the ball-like structures that are known as the histones around which the DNA is wrapping. So here um, there is a DNA that is going to uh, link between the uh, nucleosomes. Okay? So, and this DNA DNA is referred to as the uh, linker DNA, or you can say this is the spacer DNA. Okay, so you can say that the successive nucleosomes are separated by the uh, spacer DNA, and this spacer DNA or a linker DNA is made up of the 10 to 80 nucleotides are there in this uh, linker DNA. So this DNA is basically the linker DNA and it is made up of the uh, 10 to 80 nucleotides. These are the 10 to 80 nucleotides are there in the linker DNA. So there are also H1 histone proteins and uh, these can associate tightly or loosely to form the open or closed chromatin structures. And again, the, these open and closed chromatin structures are several modified by uh, several modifications of the histone proteins that in, uh, we'll discuss in our future lectures, inshallah. So this is the simplest level of the organization of the chromatin. Okay? So in this level, these ball-like structures are the histone around which the DNA is wrapping around and the, the spacer DNA which is uh, connecting these histone proteins is known as the linker DNA. So these beads on a string structures are basically predominant in the interface. Next there are uh, another structures so normally, uh, as you know, that uh, uh, chromosomes are basically the thread-like structures in which the DNA is tightly packaged within the nucleus. Uh, and in humans, in uh, us, we are there are 46 chromosomes that are arranged in 23 pairs, including 22 pairs of the autosomes and one pair is of the sex chromosomes. So uh, each chromosome pair consists of the one chromosome that we inherited from our father and the other chromosome we inherited from our mother. So this is the DNA, uh, it is the na naked DNA that is the without histone proteins. Then this is the simplest level of organization. It is going to be the beads on a string model, which is predominant in the uh, in the interface of the cell cycle. And so this structure, you can say, is the transcriptionally active. So this basically depends upon the histone modifications uh, of the protein. These histone modifications include um, methylation, acetylation, etc. And next, uh, these uh, structures, which are the 30 nanometer fibers, okay? these 30 nanometer fibers, these are a bit more complicated as it is seen here. You can see here that these um, fibers are more uh, complicated. So there are uh, basically the H1 histone proteins which help in the formation of these 30 nanometer fibers. These are known as the nucleofilament. In this, the nucleosomes basically packed more tightly and they become more condensed. So uh, <clears throat> these uh, 30 nanometer fiber structure 
uh, there are two models for this. This can be solenoid model and this can be zigzag model. So uh, solenoid model is basically the characterized by the interaction between the consecutive nucleosome. Okay? In this nucleosome, there is one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, interaction between the nucleosomes. And in this zigzag model, the interaction uh, of the nucleosome is between the alternate. So the alternate nucleosomes are going to interact with one another. So there are uh, two models for this 30 nanometer fibers. One is the solenoid model and other is the zigzag model. So what I told you that in solenoid model, there is an interaction between the consecutive nucleosomes and it uh, it's going to look like this. Okay? And in zigzag model, uh, there is the interaction between the alternate nucleosomes. So uh, actually people still don't know that the which model is actually found inside the nucleus. All these data, all these uh, models are model, these studies are based on the in vitro studies, in vitro data. Still scientists are debating on which models are basically predominant. So each model, uh, solenoid model, whether it's a zigzag model, having its own uh, advantages and the disadvantages in terms of explaining the structure. Next, there are another level of organization. These are the you can say these are the 300 nanometer fibers these 300 nanometer fibers are uh, here and here you can see that these are the several uh, structures nucleofilaments that are going to uh, coil on a particular support particular supportive structure so this particular supportive structure is the protein scaffold okay so uh, here you can see that these uh, beads on a string structures basically are going to assemble on a scaffold to form a more complicated and a more packed structure. So here you can see the structure is going to be more uh, packed and the more condensed. But here we have to understand at uh, any point of the time, we don't get all these organizations that are depend upon which cell cycle phase we are looking uh, at. Um, we would see that the chromosome in different outlook. So basically here the question is that um, what are the factors, what are the forces that basically determine the chromatin condensation and uh, uh, in some of the stages of the cell division and chromatin packaging. So here you can see uh, as this 30, um, this 300 nanometer fiber here, it is in the fo uh, form of the loops. Some are the big loops, some are the small loops. So these loops, these uh, beads on a string structures are uh, becoming more condensed and more packed. So there must be something that is uh, basically uh, must be there in order to support these loops. So this supportive proteins are basically the protein scaffold uh, on which this 300 nanometer meter, uh, fibers are being anchored. And here are some factors, some uh, proteins, molecular players that are going to uh, uh, going to uh, help in their packaging, in their uh, condensation. So these uh, factors are the cohesins and the condensins. So these molecular uh, factors which are responsible for this are the cohesives and the condensates. As the name suggests that they help in the condensation as well as cohesion of these nucleosome structures. So uh, these in the red, these rings are like the uh, these molecular players in the red. These are the cohesins and they are involved in the cohesions of these uh, nucleosome structures. And these uh, rings in the black. These are basically, these are the condensins that are, uh, these are the uh, condensins that are help in their uh, condensation. So uh, we can say that this 300 nanometer fiber is uh, uh, supported by the several cohesins and condensins rings. Uh, so eventually the metaphasic chromosome has several of these proteins. But uh, the question is uh, when the uh, chromatin needs to be separated in the anaphase. As here you can see, this was the interface, this was the prophase in metaphase. So in this metaphasic chromosome, so, um, there are many molecular factors like cohesins and the condenses are present for the uh, particular packaging and the condensation of these chromosomes. So in anaphase, these uh, chromatids are going to pull towards their opposite poles. So again, there will some 
molecular players uh, that are uh, that are present so these players are going to uh, break these co uh, cohesion rings okay these cohesion rings so what happens basically there are specific molecular players which will break down these cohesive rings and once these cohesive uh, cohesive rings are broken down then these chromatin can be pulled onto their two opposite poles with the microtubules and then they can be separated in the NFA stage so what i have told you that at this very level and uh, at this level there are number of the molecular players that are going to assist in their cohesions as well as condensation but when these chromosomes are to be separated in the NFS then there must be something to break these rings uh, in order to uh, move these uh, chromatids into their opposite folds so one of the uh, player that is that going to break these forces is the uh, separase so let's write it as a separase so this separase is going to um, going to break uh, these um, rings that are involved in the cohesion and condensation of the um, condensation of these nucleosomes so at this level 700 nanometer fiber here you can see there is more complicated structure there is more compaction and more condensation of um, these nucleosomes and then ultimately they are organized uh, into a 1400 nanometer fiber uh, to which we uh, called it as a uh, metaphasic chromosome. Actually, this is particular chromosome is going to visible in the uh, uh, in the uh, metaphase of the cell cycle. So uh, now we know that uh, more about the molecular basis of the uh, you can say uh, U chromatin or heterochromatin formation or uh, actually these U chromatin and heterochromatin uh, formation they simply came from the observation of the electron microscopic studies. So you can say that the entire uh, 10 nanometer or 11 nanometer string structure is generally uh, it is transcriptionally active structure so there are specific region of the, the overall beads on the string structure which are more active they are part of the basically u chromatin so this uh, concept of the u chromatin and the heterochromatin uh, we'll discuss in our uh, in our future lectures so here you can see that we have uh, studied the different levels of the organization, different levels of the chromosomal organizations, different level of the, you can say, uh, eukaryotic genome organization. Uh, so the very simplest level is the beads on the string model on which the DNA is basically wrapped around the histone proteins. Histone proteins are the basic proteins and then these nucleosomes are packed more tightly and these are known as the nucleofilament. This 30 nanometer fiber is basically known as a chromatin fiber so there can be two models for this the one is the solenoid model and other one is the zigzag model and again it's going to be more condensed and uh, converted into the 300 nanometer fiber and here the big loops and small loops are going to encode on the proteinaceous scaffold and here the molecular players that are involved in the uh, cohesions and condensation of these um, these nucleosomes and again there will be the more condensation and uh, we'll get a 700 nanometer and again uh, it is ultimately it's going to be the metaphasic chromosome that is uh, going to appear in the nucleus of the cell so uh, that's all about today's lecture if you like the video then you can uh, subscribe if you like the lecture, then you may uh, like the video and subscribe my channel. So thank you very much and good luck to all.